It was the first helicopter in aviation history to reach production status. In fact, its performance was so impressive, being able to reach 113 miles per hour and an altitude of 23,300 feet in testing, that the Luftwaffe ordered 400 of the Fokker Achigelis FA-223s to be built towards the end of World War II. Only 20 models of the Drache, or Dragon, were produced, however, due to constant disruptions by Allied bombing. With only a limited number of the helicopters in existence, each of the Allied powers were eager to get their hands on one in order to study its unique design that used a single radial engine and dual three-bladed rotors. After America captured two of the only surviving models, it put one on a ship back to the US, and it was ready to destroy the other. Yet Britain wanted it for themselves, and marshaled a German POW pilot to fly it across the English Channel. Aviation pioneer and co-founder of Focke Wolf, Heinrich Focke, was a pioneer. Nevertheless, because he was deemed unreliable for the Nazis, he had been removed from his own company. In 1936, the German Reichsluftfahrtministerium phased the company into producing the Messerschmitt BF-109, reorganizing Focke Wolf as a limited-run company. They signed a contract to produce the Messerschmitt plane in November of the following year. Then the American International Telephone and Telegraph Company bought 28% of Focke-Wulf. Notwithstanding, the Reichsluftfahrtministerium was impressed with its FW-61 prototype, the world's first functional helicopter, and demanded a design capable of carrying upwards of 1,500 pounds. Through a partnership with pilot Gerd Achgelis, Focke Achgelis began the design process at Delmenhorst in 1938. Using the engine, transmission, and rotor hub from BMW, a six-person FW-61 was designated FA-226 Hornisse. This first transport helicopter was ordered by Lufthansa in 1938. Ahead of its time, the FA-223 was a continuation of its predecessors, the FA-226 Hornissa, and FW-61. The FA-226 Hornissa resembled an enlarged FA-61, but stood on its own as the world's first practical transport helicopter. Although the prototype was completed in 1939, it required further development to turn it into a military vehicle. Following 100 hours of ground tests, there was a designated military version of the FA-223. The FA-223 used a similar arrangement to the FW-61, including a pair of counter-rotating rotors on the outriggers of the airframe, with a radial engine housed in the fuselage. Its maiden flight took place in August 1940. Unlike the original FW-61, this craft had an engine installed amidships, inside the steel tube fuselage behind the passenger compartments, which held only four people. The forward area of the cabin was made of a multi-panel enclosure with flat plexiglass. The helicopter featured a tricycle undercarriage with a 1,000 horsepower Brahmo 323 Q3 radial engine. The military role seemed promising. It was indeed a departure for Foka Achilles from the original feeder transport helicopter purpose set out by Lufthansa's original order. During the manufacturing trials, the craft suffered mild instability while under certain speeds. Aside from that, the helicopter's handling and maneuverability were excellent. Conducted in early 1942, acceptance trials concluded successfully, with the Reichsluftfahrtministerium ordering another hundred production models. By July 1942, the second prototype was completed after a few test flights. Though ten Drache completed that same year were lost to a bombing raid. Further raids complicated production, both helicopters and their parts were destroyed by the Allies. V-1, or version 1, of the Drache flew for the first time on August 3rd, 1940. Before that, it logged over 100 hours of ground and tethered testing. 
It flew to Reckland for a demonstration in October, where it reached its top speed of 113 miles per hour, with a climb rate of 1,732 feet a minute. The maximum altitude achieved was 23,000 feet, surpassing any other helicopter's performance prior. However, it still wasn't ready for military service. The company needed to accelerate the project with an initial production order of over 100 choppers. Following its remarkable display, an additional five variants were requested. Unfortunately, V-1 was lost in February 1941 due to engine failure at low altitude that did not allow auto-rotative landing. The V-2, with a new glazed cockpit and a machine gun mount, was finished shortly after, only to be destroyed during an air raid. After abandoning the idea of five separate variants, the F-3 was built to be Germany's one multi-purpose plane, labeled FA-223E. It incorporated features and elements from other versions, including dual controls and an electric winch. The V-3 had a welded steel tubing body covered with fabric, which reduced weight and allowed for more straightforward repairs, much like its predecessor. The inside of the final version was divided into four sections. The first was the cockpit, intensely glazed and allowed for excellent visibility for the pilot and observer. The second compartment was a payload section, with a starboard entrance and a self-sealing fuel and oil tank. The third section was the engine compartment, and finally the tail section. The only metal paneling on the helicopter covered the engine compartment. The engine itself was a BMW Brahmo 323 Q3 Fafner, boasting a thousand horsepower. It relied on a supercharger with a cooling fan. It was mounted alongside a gearbox in two rings, held by cables. The movement of the engine around the chopper was prevented by struts. The frontal fireproof bulkhead for the engine compartment had a gap of 20 centimeters separating this area from the payload compartment. The gap featured openings to the tip and sides, covered only by the wire mesh so that the engine could draw in fresh air. The exhaust went through a pipe that ejected it out of the roof. The engine's power was transferred by a friction plate clutch within the gearbox, and also through hollow shafts into the rotor headgears. The rotors had a regular speed of 275 RPM. To support the two radio heads, steel tube outriggers extended from the side to the fuselage. A freewheel mechanism allowed the rotors to keep revolving, even if the drive transmission jammed. The blades had flapping and dragging hinges with friction and inertia dampers that limited vibration. The blades were made of wooden ribs joined to conical high-tension steel tubes covered by a mix of plywood and fabric. Hydraulic brakes were operated from the rudder pedals. They were fitted for the main wheels only, with the nose wheel capable of self-centering and turning 360 degrees. To perform diverse roles, the FA-223's necessary equipment was fitted or removed depending on the need for that day. There were several operational roles planned for the Draka helicopter. Among its functions, the Draka performed anti-submarine, reconnaissance, transport, search and rescue, and pilot training purposes. Excluding training, all configurations of the helicopter required an FUG-17 radio, a corresponding altimeter, a nose-mounted MG-15 machine gun, and an additional seat for an observer. Additional equipment included a rescue cradle, reconnaissance camera, and detachable fuel tank for anti-submarine and reconnaissance efforts. It could carry fuselage racks for two 250-kilogram bombs for submarine warfare. A load-carrying beam was installed to tow up to 1,280 kilograms by cable. To test its performance, 30 pre-production Drakas were ordered by the Rechtsluftfahrtministerium. Constructed in Bremen, the order demanded a larger four-rotor version in 1943. That project never developed. In 1942, production of the FA-223 began at Delmenhorst. However, an Allied air raid hit the factory in June, destroying two prototypes and the first seven helicopters assembled as part of pre-production. Consequently, efforts to restore the factory were abandoned in 1943, with a new plant set up at Laupheim. The V-11 was the first Draco produced there. It was flown by pilot Carl Boda for a series of instructional films. In them, the helicopter used the winch and quick-release electrical cargo hook 
to move the fuselage of a plane and lift a Fieseler Stork aircraft. In 1944, the V-11 was sent to recover a Dornier DO-217, which crashed in the Vanner Moor. Ironically, the V-11 crashed during recovery. The V-11 was then dismantled, and the V-14 Drake helicopter was sent in to recover the parts. All told, they made ten flights piloted by Carl Boda or Helmut Gerstenhauer, lifting pieces with a cargo net and loading them onto ground vehicles. Significant parts of both wreckages were salvaged. The Germans reassessed the helicopter's potential to serve as a transport vehicle in mountainous regions. The V-14 and V-16 were sent to the Mountain Warfare School in Mittenwald for further testing. 83 flights with 20 flying hours each were performed throughout a range of altitudes. By June 1944, only seven rotorcraft were built at the new facility before another air raid destroyed the factory. At the time, the V-18 was ready for delivery with 13 assembled and enough parts for 19 more. All were lost. The Reichsluftfahrt Ministerium saw no purpose in starting over. Promising results of the mountain trials encouraged the FOCO staff to send models back to headquarters after a brief stint at Messerschmitt to establish a production operation at the Berlin Tempelhof Airport. They were tasked with producing 400 Drachen a month. The goal was never accomplished. They managed only to build one, and by the arrival of V Day, only three airworthy helicopters even survived. The V-12 flew across Germany to Mont Blanc, set to rescue a group of 17 people stranded on the mountain. However, the helicopter was lost when a mechanical link failure disintegrated the rotor and hurled the chopper against an embankment. By some accounts, only two Draca planes reportedly survived the war, one of which the U.S. nearly destroyed due to a lack of transportation space. The model that the Americans did keep was dismantled and sent to Wright Field in the U.S., where it was examined by several companies in 1947, with no developments resulting from the examination. The helicopter's remains then mysteriously disappeared. Britain, however, was not about to let the other model be scrapped, and instead put it back in the hands of Helmut Gerstenhauer, who had by then surrendered. Seventeen years to the day of the first rotorcraft's development, Gerstenhauer piloted the Draca on its way to becoming the first helicopter to cross the English Channel. The aircraft was lost on its third test flight in England when it crashed after a vertical takeoff. In the late 1940s, France and Czechoslovakia had built their own Draca using seized parts. Three were known to have been completed by the end of World War II. In France, the SNCA du Sud was constructed with the assistance of Heinrich Fucke himself. It was flown for the first time on October 23, 1948, under the designation SE-3000. The other two, built by Zavoti Liteke in Czechoslovakia, were designated VR-1. By war's end, the ambitious German plan to produce a fleet died with the Reich. Their ultimate goal was to design a four-rotor chopper made from two United Draca helicopters. Their hope, it would have been able to lift a staggering 7,000 kilogram or 15,432 pound payload. In 